Hello Michelle, I am writing to you today from my parents house where I think probably one of my kids is fast asleep and the other one is probably just yelling at the moment. Yeah, so first I just wanted to tell you about a couple of things that I got for Christmas which were really cool. One that I bought myself <laughs> was the Moleskin watercolour journal and I'm actually so greedy and ridiculous that I bought it in three sizes, pocket, large, which is kind of A5 and A4 and I don't know which one I'm going to start exactly but I want to start like 2018 I want to start an art journal a bit inspired by Minnie Small with that one I was looking at one of the videos of her art journaling and really admiring that and thinking about it as a way to develop always have something to art about and something to reflect upon later not that I'm really into that kind of thing but you know at least from the perspective of this is what I used to be like this is what I do now that sort of thing I received from James a Prismacolor pencils set which is beautiful and amazing and I'm really looking forward to using oh just looking at them makes me so happy. I never thought I would see the day when I thought I would receive a set of colored pencils and think that that was both really exciting and amazing and yeah. My mum and dad gave me some sable paint brushes. I am yet to try them but that is also something that I'm very excited about. Um, it wasn't going to be something that I purchased. I was going to be like all low key all the way and maybe one day I would start buying a tube here or a tube there of more expensive paint or something like that if I really maintained my art habit. But dad, I think, you know, as an artist himself, thought that I should have some very special paintbrushes. So that's pretty cool. My brother gave me a color mixing little book which I am going to devour. And what else? I also got myself a, this isn't really Christmas is it if I just buy myself something but anyway I got myself a beginner set of gouache paints and I also got myself a small packet of coal arrays pencils because I have been finding that when I've been doing outlines in grey lead you know very very faint, faint as possible using a putty eraser to soak up as much of the graphite as I can before I add any colour with anything like whether it's watercolor or pencil or whatever it is um, I can still see the grey lead at the end and I'm not confident enough to completely erase the grey lead marks so you know as I had mentioned before I had seen these other artists use the colorase pencils so I've bought a little packet of those all in all a very arty pleasurable exciting little bundle there. Oh and mum found me this chopping board sort of thing that overseas that looks like an artist's palette which I just think is cheesy but also really cool. I really like it. I wanted to talk about my favourite books from this year. I, I try really hard to do a lot of reading books but at the same time 
I also want to be really, you know, in the moment and paying attention and all that sort of thing, like present for my kids. I set myself what I thought was a doable goal of one book a month and I got to like book nine or something and it was a super long book so then by the time I got to December I realized that I had to basically choose really short books <laughs> to, to be able to meet my goal but that's okay you know it's not cheating or anything because I did read a couple of really long books in there but I wanted to mention four standout books this year which was pretty good I'd like to have four out of 12 that were completely cool so the first one is one of my super short ones. It was called The Department of Speculation and I gave it to my brother for Christmas and he read it the morning of Boxing Day. Like it's that short and he really enjoyed it too. And it's about a woman who becomes a mother and how she's mentally unhealthy. Like it never actually really says what, in what way or how much or anything like that. But she has struggles with life and it's, I think it's briefly mentioned here and there that she is on medication, but at the same time, it doesn't seem like she's super supported by the other adults in her life. Um, in a way that acknowledges what what she's dealing with apart from the everyday normal struggles that you have to deal with that she's dealing with extra crap um, and it's written from her perspective and I thought it was beautiful and my Goodreads review said beautiful and sad and mad. Second one I'll mention is The Rise and Fall of Dodo which was a super fun book. It's Neil Stevenson. I don't know if you've read it or not. I'm pretty sure you've read Neil Stevenson before. It is a big book but it is so easy to read and so enjoyable and I was hooked until the last. I just wanted to know what was going to happen next the whole time which is always a winner. The next one was Haunting, Lincoln in the Bardo. I think it's like won a bunch of awards by George Saunders. It's just got the weirdest synopsis which is like Abraham Lincoln goes to visit a graveyard and it's about the conversations the ghosts have around him while he's in the graveyard, which you just sound so bonkers. But when you start reading it and everything unfolds, it is so creatively put together and you don't know what's real and what's not and what you're even reading sometimes and you have to fill in so many gaps but in a really good kind of exercising the brain kind of way. This hasn't really been in a particular order but I would if I had to say one book was my absolute favorite of this year I would say Tiny Beautiful Things by Cheryl Strayed which was actually an advice column that was by an anonymous advice giver who eventually came out and said oh it's me I'm Cheryl Strayed and so all these people had written to her for advice on all kinds of topics and not only are her letters back to them in the column wonderful and meaningful and really mature and well thought out and full of so much strong big perspective kind of thing. She even shows the human condition through her responses because sometimes she'll show one letter that she received and then she'll actually print like three or four or five other letters that are such similar letters showing you know these other people are going through exactly the same thing as you and you really think that you know you're in this lone spot but you're not and that her advice back to these people can be grouped together because 
she's given the same advice to this problem in general. I've been thinking about resolutions. I really love the new year. I love thinking about what do I want to improve on from the previous year and where do I want to go from here? What do I want my next year to look like? What do I want to have to show for it by the end? What do I want to change because I didn't like the direction that that was going or what that resulted in, etc. So I always really enjoy reflecting and thinking about what I want to do differently. And I often find that one of the, the things that happens is And I didn't get this until I read Gretchen Rubin's like the happiness progress project and stuff, but the things that you think that you should want to do or the things that you feel like you should do, you know, if they're not getting scratched off your list, then maybe it's time to just put them in a bin. And since I came across that phenomenon, I've found it every year more and more clearly. So there were some things on my like to-do list, goals list, whatever for 2017 that I'm just like, you know what, I really actually don't have the interest in doing those or not in the way that I thought that I did. So let's put them in the bin. Um, let's free up that to-do space, that goal space, that whatever. Let's, let's free that up for something else that could be really cool. I'm still working on exactly what my resolutions will be, which I will have for next week, but this is just kind of thinking about it. Definitely hashtag art, art, art. <laughs> Definitely our art project on here and trying to maintain a practice of daily art, um, wanting to try different mediums, different styles, different whatever, everything, different everythings. And I've definitely got on my list random acts of kindness because even though that sounds really cheesy, I want to work on kindness as a theme. One is even more colour. I love colour and I've been trying to get more, more colour in my life. I've been trying to find more colourful clothes and stuff like that. It's really hard. <laughs> Melbourne fashion, grown-up fashion is also boring and black and white and dull and yeah. And I wanted to start off our art project. I'm just going to choose the first item on the list. I don't know if that makes you angry or not, but it's just paint your cup in, in natural colours. Paint, draw, collage, put different food colorings in your saliva and spit them on the paper I don't care what you do um, your cup someone else's cup tea cup coffee cup takeaway cup I don't care anything at some point in January let's both do a video about us completing that cup in our natural colors or unnatural cup little bit of talking through what you've decided to do and then maybe like a time-lapse speedy yuppie thing of you doing it and then we'll hopefully both have an extra video to share at some point in January and then we can give it its own special tag like art 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 or Monaco art project or something well that's all it's getting dark thank you very much for your encouraging words regarding my terrible plant painting mum came over to my house yesterday and she saw it and she thought it looked good too so it can't be so bad if two people say it's okay <laughs> anyway it was just a study just an exercise and um yeah if anyone else viewing, which I don't think we have any viewers, but I'll say it anyway, if anyone else viewing has ideas for little art challenges for Michelle and me, um, pop them in the comments and we'll add them to our list. Pluck them out at random. Bye. I love you. Bye.
I love you, bye. I love you, bye.